last year, to start the conversation, I introduced a bill that would bring pre-K to all overnight, right? And, um, and of course, we needed to involve stakeholders and really get to the right model for Kentucky. And um, so with my new Republican co-sponsor, Representative Steve Sheldon of Bowling Green, we think we have come to the, the right strategy for us right now. And that's to establish a task force in 2020 that's going to um, bring together experts from across the state, across sectors, and determine what's the best model for Kentucky. You know, what's working here in our limited pre-K program and what's working in other states where it is available to all families. Um, and then by 2022, that task force will produce a bill that can be voted on in the 2022 budget session. So 2022 is quite some time away, you know, but, and some people argue that things take too long in Frankfurt, uh -huh. but it's good that the task force is getting started in 2020, but do you have a cost estimate at this point? Well, I'll say that 2022 feels far away. It feels far away to me too, because I want pre-K tomorrow. Um, but for families who are expecting or who have a newborn, you know, pre-K is still pretty far away for them. So um, when we're looking at cost estimates, we are getting numbers across the board. They're all big numbers. I'll acknowledge they're all big numbers. Um, but the final number is really going to determine, be determined by what the task force sees as the model for Kentucky. It's going to be some sort of mixed delivery model where we're using private centers, home-based centers, child care centers, and public preschools. And when you look at what other states have done, there's just so many ways to do it that we'll have to see what Kentucky comes up with. Now here in Kentucky, do we currently have all like kindergarten all around the state or are there still counties without that? So every county is offering kindergarten, right? This, is, an this is another fight that I'm yeah. in, um, which is to fully fund kindergarten. So I was surprised to learn a year or so ago that in our school funding formula, kindergartners are counted as half of a kid compared to first graders who are a whole kid, right? And if you know kindergartners and first graders, you know there's not much of a difference, right? There's one birthday difference. Um, and the reason that kindergartners are counted as half of a kid in our school funding formula is because uh, Kentucky only mandates that districts offer a half day of kindergarten. Now something like 100 out of 106 are offering the full day, but the districts are coming up with the money for that second half of the day. So we're pushing for full day equitable funding for kindergarten, just like we fund first grade through 12th. Uh, which would allow districts to reinvest that money in services, personnel, other things to move our kids forward. So who exactly would this impact? So this would be statewide for the pre-K? You want it to impact basically every Kentuckian? Every Kentuckian, we really think it will, yes. So, so uh, if we could pass a bill in 2022, bringing pre-K to every family in Kentucky, right? This is going to be an optional program, but we could see every three and four year old with access to high quality pre-K in the state, right? And that is going to affect every Kentucky and not just families with a three year old or a four year old because we know the benefits to children, right? We have decades upon decades of research of the benefits of pre-K for children, social emotional learning, higher executive functioning, Kids who go to pre-K are more likely to graduate from high school, from college. They have higher lifetime earnings. There's data now that the children of children who go to pre-K are healthier. It's just astounding, right? We know how it's going to benefit families, right? Um, I share my daycare number all the time. Last year when I had a four-year-old and a three-year-old in high-quality care, it cost me $22,000 a year, right? We were happy to do it because we could, right? But it's an investment that not every family can make. Um, this is going to help workers. Almost all of our early childhood educators are women. The average wage is about $11 across the state. Um, and this is going to help business in Kentucky. We hear from employers all the time that they cannot find employees with the soft skills they need to succeed, right? Things like waiting your turn and <laughs> sharing and communicating your feelings to your coworkers. And so we are arguing where do people learn to do that? Pre-K is a great place. So. Um, what do the critics have to say? I'm sure not everybody is supportive of this, and I'm sure with the price tag, that also brings critics. So you know, what you know what's interesting? Say? You know what's interesting? So we're not seeing anyone in Frankfurt on either side of the aisle arguing with the data. Like I said, there's decades of research showing the benefits of pre-K. No one's arguing with the data. We're going to fight over the price tag, for sure. I think it's a matter of believing enough in the cause to be willing to engage in that fight. Now, we do hear criticisms from around the state. One is that uh, we want to get our hands on the children sooner so we can brainwash them. If we were going to do that, I think kindergarten through 12th grade would be long enough, right? Another criticism is from people who haven't been in a pre-K classroom recently and don't really understand what play-based learning looks like. Some people think it's babysitting. It's not. 
Some people think it's kids chained to desks, <laughs> you know, being whipped to do worksheets. It's not that either. Um, a couple other criticisms we hear from people working in the early childhood space are that we really need to focus on full day funding for kindergarten first. And I say it's something that needs to actually work together. Or that most brain development actually happens zero through three. So how can we pay attention to that group of children? And so we're looking at some ways to do that too, but I think the time is really right to focus on pre-K. We see incredible organizational support across the state. You know, the coalition is extremely broad, right? Um, when the Chamber of Commerce is talking about it and school districts are talking about it and teachers unions are talking about it, that's an incredibly broad coalition. Um, and then we've seen public support through the roof in the 80 percent in the latest poll. So what do you think is Outside of this education issue in the next coming years, how do you feel is the best way to make a pitch for all of these things that we need to do in education? We all know that we need to do more in education, but with the budget so tight, what do you feel is the best pitch for this or other issues? Well, for pre-K, the, the pitch is pretty clear, right? It's that this is a cost-saving measure, right? And we know from other states that incarceration rates are going to go down. Right? The reliance on social services are going to go down. It's just a matter of can we wait 10 or 15 or 20 years to feel the impact. Um, it's an investment in our children, for sure. We know that kids who go to pre-K do better in school, are more likely to graduate from high school and college, uh, and get a high-paying job. These are the kind of employees we want in Kentucky. Right? When we're looking to bring employees from out of state, we need to have an attractive quality of life for them um, to come here. And we know, we know that pre-K is going to add to that. So my argument is that pre-K is an investment, right? And I'm not finding many people who will disagree. It's just are we willing to make it right now? Across Kentucky, there's so many families, right, who have their children in child care right now. And they're seeing both how valuable it is, right? We're in a state that doesn't mandate that kids show up to school until they're six years old. Anybody, a parent, a grandparent, an auntie, who sees a child from zero to five knows the incredible amount of learning that's happening every single day. And it just feels like we're shortchanging our kids if we wait until they're six to give them that opportunity to, unlearn, to learn, to engage, to build the social skills and the friendships that they do when they're in school. Um, I'll say that those parents are also feeling the pain of paying for high quality childcare. You know, we're seeing the rate go up at the same rate of college tuition. We talk about college affordability an awful lot, but people keep childcare costs kind of a secret. So that's why I shout my big old number all the time, and I say that young families need to say, this is what I'm paying. This is how it's straining my family. What can we do about it?